In the last video in this series, I'm going to discuss the final step in putting this machine together. This machine could very well be a gaming PC, but we're just doing a powerful and fast workstation that will do number crunching and file sharing. So that's why I'm going with Windows 10 Pro. Now this is not my first time using this motherboard. It's my motherboard of choice when building a workstation. But it's actually my first time using the Ryzen 5 5600G processor. Bear in mind that this motherboard, although it has video ports, it doesn't have a built-in video chip. So if you want to use the integrated HDMI or display port, make sure that your Ryzen processor has a built-in video chip. Otherwise, you will have to get a video card for the PCI Express X16 slot. Let me just say that the BIOS version that this motherboard shipped with did not support the Ryzen 5 5600G processor. Now normally this would be a problem, because then you would have to get a compatible processor, install it, upgrade the BIOS, and then put the new processor in. Not in this case. MSI has a system that allows you to install the 5600G and the memory, connect the power, and with a USB flash drive plugged into this port, you just press this button over here and the BIOS updates in about 5 minutes. Bear in mind that the USB flash drive that I referred to needs to have the new BIOS file on board because that's what the computer, or I should say the motherboard, is going to read from. Regardless of which motherboard you use, make sure you visit the motherboard support page and find the list of compatible processors. I did have problems both before and after installing Windows. Sometimes the motherboard wouldn't boot and other times it would be in Windows and then just shut down by itself. It's important to know what troubleshooting tools are available on your motherboard and these white LEDs right here serve as a guide. I noticed that the CPU light always lit whenever there was a problem, but in my experience it's rarely the CPU. It is usually the motherboard itself. So with that in mind, I sent back the motherboard and got an exact replacement. Now because I have Amazon Prime, I didn't do an actual exchange. I simply ordered the exact same board while starting a return for the defective board. Within two days I got the new board, so rather than opening the package that came in the new box, I simply used the hardware and documentation from the first board and then put the new documentation in the old box with the old motherboard. Having swapped out the motherboard, everything worked but I still had an intermittent issue. To eliminate that issue I had to go into the BIOS and set the primary video device as the integrated video. That solved all my problems and the machine is now working fine. Some people get very angry when they detect a defective motherboard, but bear in mind that motherboards are produced in large amounts on an assembly line, so it's inevitable that a few of these motherboards will develop issues during the manufacturing process. In my next video, I'll be upgrading an 8-year-old motherboard as I build a high-end graphics gaming PC. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can find out when that video is released.